Hello friends, welcome to the second problem of CNF. So let's get started with the problem. So the question which is given to us is, I have S gives me something like this. S again gives me something like this. S gives me a small p, something which we are familiar with and S gives me a small q. Now when a problem like this comes to us, first and foremost thing, we really need not worry about the things that are written in the problem. The things which are identified to us, that is the things which are in capital alphabets will always be variables. And till now I used to say that everything in small alphabets will be terminals. But now I will like to slightly reframe the definition because questions like this also do come in the exam. So here, now I see my variables are going to be always capital letters, whereas terminals are going to be anything other than that found in the production rules. So over here in the production rules, I see a tilde sign, I see square brackets, I see greater than sign and I see two normal small alphabets P and Q. All of this will be nomenclated as terminals. Rest everything are going to be variables. So frankly speaking, in this problem, I see a single variable which is S. And in fact, it is consisting of a single production also. Instead of writing the productions one below the another, S gives this, S gives that, I could have written everything separated by a slash. But this is written in this form just for having a more clarity of the problem. That's it. So without wasting time, let's get started to the solution. So now, to add on to the solution, my step number one over here was performing the elimination of null unit and useless productions. Looking at the grammar, I do not see any null productions. In fact, there are no unit productions also. And if I look for the definition of useless production, it says the variable should be reachable from the start state. But I see only a single variable over here. So there is no question of reachability. The second says that it should be capable of deriving a sentence. Yes, S can very well derive a sentence because S is landing finally in two terminals, small p and small q. So I do not see any useless variables also. So I can now directly say that my step one is done. So now we can move on to step two. Now. For step 2 and step 3, which we always do it in the combined fashion, you have to follow the strategy which I just suggested. So let's get started with that. So now I write my productions over here and I am going to write my solution over here. So the first production is S gives small p. Before that, if you remember, my Chomsky form says the production should be of the form a gives b c or a gives me small a this is just for reference now s is giving me small p it is in the chomsky normal form so we add on to the solution next one s gives small q this is also in the chomsky normal form so we add on this also to the solution the next production let's see what we have so we are done with P, we are done with Q. Now let us start with this production. S gives tilde S. So S is giving me tilde S and this is not in CNF. So can I say introduce a temporary variable C1 which is giving me this tilde and this tilde is nothing but a terminal. Therefore I say C1 gives me tilde symbol is in CNF and now I can say S is giving me C1 S also in CNF. Now you can of course write it in the production and rewrite in the solution or directly write in the solution. In the previous problem, I did do it stepwise. But frankly speaking, this is a very trivial step. So you can ideally skip and directly write as the way I have written over here. So I have my S gives tilde S purely converted to the form which is required by the CNF. Going on to the next one. So let's consider the final production, this one. So let's write. My S is giving me square bracket S greater than 
s square bracket now you remember the rule replace it by temporary variables so let us say my c2 over here i'm assuming that c2 is giving me this open bracket that makes this s to have c2 s greater than s square bracket again i see that there is existence of two more terminals so now i say introduce one more temporary variable let us say c3 and let's call c3 as a greater than derivation production so that gives my s as c2 s c3 s square bracket again i observe that the grammar still has a terminal and that is nothing but a closing square bracket so let's introduce one more temporary variable c4 which is deriving me this closing square bracket and therefore now i have my s as c2 s c3 s c4 now i see the grammar consists of a variable giving me a lot of other variables and the rule for getting converted to cnf was suggested as keep the first term as it is and replace everything by another temporary variable so now i say can i say s is giving me c2 c5 where c5 in turn is giving me s c3 s c4 going ahead i say keep the first variable as it is and replace everything by another temporary variable therefore i write over here continue over here so c5 is going to give me s c6 where c6 in turn is giving me c3 s c4 now among these two productions my c5 is already converted to cnf therefore i write c5 gives me s c6 over here whereas if i observe for c6 again keep c3 as it is and s c4 will be replaced by a further new production so now i see let my c7 give my s c4 and c6 in turn will now be giving c3 c7 now i see all the productions have been converted to the chomsky normal form so now it is the time to rewrite all the productions under one roof so let's do that now so therefore i have my cfg in c and f as follows so i have s gives c2 c5 or c1 s or p or q c1 gives me tilde my c2 gives me square bracket my c3 gives me greater than sign my c4 gives me closing bracket c5 gives me s c6 c6 gives me c3 c7 and lastly my c7 gives me s c4 with this we complete with this problem 2 where we are getting a cfg converted to cnf thank you